something you enjoy, like a hobby, something you're good at. Sure, a passion can be something you're good at, and it is something you like, but it's not just a hobby. A hobby is something that you like, and you'll do it sometimes, but a passion is something you have deep emotions about. And it can be anything, from a sport like swimming, basketball, football, to a craft like drawing or knitting. If you have a deep love for that passion, if you have a deep love for that activity, then it's your passion. But it's not always the activity. Sometimes it's the outcome. If you are really bored when you're cleaning up your room, but then at the end, you're really happy with what your room looks like, that is what you're passionate about, the clean part. Or if you're really bored helping someone, but when you see them happy at the end, that could be the part that you strive for. But feeling good about yourself isn't the only thing. And you don't always have to be good at your passion. To quote George Burns, I'd rather be a failure at something I love than a success at something I hate. Which I think it makes perfect sense because if you're bad at something but you love it, that gives you a better impact than if you're good at something that you never want to do. So, it can also, your passion can also act as a stress reliever for you. So take Sally for an example. Every day she goes to work, but one day in particular is especially stressful. So she comes home and can't get anything done. But she also has a passion, and that's a love for tennis. So she goes and plays tennis, and after that, she's feeling happy and relaxed. The reason for this is that your passion is that your passion can relax you and it can get rid of the negative emotions that you have, like stress. It can also help your self-esteem. If you're feeling self-conscious or down and you go and do whatever activity that you love, that can help boost your spirits and your confidence. These are both harmonious passions. Harmonious passions are part of you and you control how often you do it. You might say, I'm going to do this for this long, but then I'm going to come back to the work I have to do. And that's always good to know how to be able to control how much you're doing your passion. But there's also obsessive passions. An obsessive passion is when you let your passion control you. And you let it control you by not by getting wrapped up in what you're doing. So my cousin Kindale left loves cats a lot. She loves everything about cats. She plays with her stuffed cats. She has, plays with her real cat. She wants to be a cat. And the worst part, she wants me to be a cat. So that's when a, a passion can get obsessive. When you exclude yourself from other activities and you want everybody else to be part of your activity and you seclude yourself from people who aren't part of that acti activity. But a passion can be both harmonious and obsessive. I have passion for reading. Yes, that's me in fourth grade. I have passion for reading, and I will be able to control, okay, so I'm just gonna do the, read for a little bit, but I'm gonna get back to my work. But sometimes it can get to an obsessive level where I'll get completely wrapped up in my book, and I won't pay attention to what's going on, and then I, have a lot of work to do later. So when this happens, that's when my passion becomes obsessive. But a passion can also work as a motivation. That's the inspirational side to it. So if you have a job, if you apply for a job, but you don't get the one you want, then you have two options. You can give up or you can work harder. If you work harder to try and get to the job you want, then that is just the start of a passion working for you. Then, if you work harder, you have two more options. You can work even more and get to the point you want, or you can stay with where you're at. But when you work your hardest to get to the best spot, that's what a passion can do. And when you're working, when you're working, the points that you're getting to that makes it all worthwhile, all the work to get to that passion. So find your passion, because finding your passion isn't just about careers and money, it's about finding your authentic self, the one you've buried beneath other people's needs. That's a quote from Kristen Hanna, by the way. 
Because you want to find your true self, the part of you that's deep inside and it's what you love. It can, and when you find your passion, it can help as many things, as a stress reliever, as motivation, as a confidence lifter. But find your passion and let it impact you. Thank you.